Now, boys and girls, probably like many of you out there, I was a big fan of the Assassin's Creed game when they came out back in the day. Ubisoft used to be one of those guys that was king of the mountain. They could do no wrong with a lot of their games, and every single Assassin's Creed game was an absolute hit and a smash success, much like what the Call of Duty games were back in the day as well. God of War, all of this kind of stuff out there. There was a lot of great stuff. It was a great time to be a gamer back then, and it was something that I absolutely enjoyed. And it was one of those games where I did play a lot of the sequels. I went all the way through up to, I think I played and ended up playing a little bit of Brotherhood. I think the last ones I know I played all the way through were Black Flag and then that one with the where you were the uh, the Native American in, in, in America helping out with the revolution, the very war and stuff like that. And that game was a lot of fun. That was a lot of good stuff. But man, over the last few years, things really seem to have fallen off. And of course, Ubisoft has been infected by a lot of the exact same acolytes of the cult that a lot of we've seen in a lot of the rest of mainstream Hollywood and the mainstream video game industry. And it's something that we've seen happen time and time again. It doesn't, we don't have to go too far back at all to look at games like the Saints Row, Re, Saints Row reboot, which is one of the games that I absolutely loved. That new franchise reboot just caused an absolute abysmal failure not only was the game over the top with political agenda and all of that other kind of agenda bs that they like to push but also ended up being an extremely broken game that just failed miserably because obviously the game developers were concentrating more on their agenda than they were on actually making a good solid game that worked well ladies and gentlemen we've got another example of that now because ubisoft is officially going out there and as we've known the assassin's creed games have always had a little bit of a historical slant they've always been kind of set in historical times you've always kind of had to get it was historical figures well boys and girls it looks like once again ubisoft Ubisoft is playing fast and loose with the his the accurate history out there and they are using it for diversity for diversity's sake as usual because as you can see here from this article from bounding into comics assassin's creed shadows trailer confirms feudal japan set title to feature a black protagonist now obviously there has been rumors and there has been stories and there's been lore about this kind of thing for a long time about a black samurai we've heard about gaijin going over there and become samurai and stuff like that but the problem is the historical data just doesn't actually back up a lot of the lore that's going on out there and set up this kind of stuff so once again it's sounds like just like what we've seen with some of the historical misrepresentations with Cleopatra over at Netflix, they just want to race swap for the sake of race swapping. They just want to change stories and change history just for the sake of diversity's sake. And it's something that we've seen time and time happen again. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to check out this article, getting into bounty into comics, talk about what the trailer has actually showed up. And if you haven't already gone and watched it for yourself, go check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Honestly, the trailer doesn't look that bad. It's just once again, the problem with historical accuracy. And we know why they're doing this just for the sake of doing it. There is no reason you could not have done like a Gaijin, which we know is actual accurate stories. We know of actual Europeans going over there and going through this kind of training and stuff like that. But no, 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 we can't have that. We have to use some rumor. We have to use some innuendo. We have to use some historical inaccuracies in order to try to push and justify an agenda. And once again, just like Ubisoft with their coming out there and saying you'll never own your games again, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if this game is going to be good or not, but I would definitely wait before you do not pre-order these games in this humble common nerd's opinion. Honestly, don't pre-order anything these days anymore because we've seen so many games come out broken and just not end up being what they're in. And from the trailer they showed, it's not gameplay trailer. It's all cinematic trailer. It's all of that kind of stuff. You can go out there and check it out for yourself and let me know if you think whether or not it's actually going to be worth a pre-order. So we're going to check out this article, Bounding in the Comics, getting all the juicy details. But before we do, if you have not already, make sure you hit that like button, share it with all your friends, and subscribe and or follow if you have not already. Also, tomorrow, May 16th at 11 a.m. on our Common Nerds channel, just recently got monetized, we'll be doing a birthday celebration. So if you're catching this stream before, if you're catching this video beforehand or the day of, come and check it out. We're starting at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and we'll be going all day celebrating our new monetization on the new YouTube channel as well as my birthday. So definitely come check that out. So let's get into this article and see exactly what's going on. Assassin's Creed Shadows trailer confirms Feudal Japan set to feature black protagonist. Update from May 15th, with the release of Assassin's Creed Shadow's first trailer, Yusuku role as one of the two protagonists has officially been confirmed. However, contrary to the original reports, his partner Nioa is not black, but Japanese. The original story with edits made regarding Noah's ethnicity follows below. So they went back and fixed it as soon as the trailer came out. Because they got some leaks early on, they got some leaks with some of the images, some of the still images and stuff that came out from the trailer, so they just went ahead and just dropped the whole trailer. And making a distinctive break from previous franchise entries, alleged leaks have revealed that rather than any heroes who hail from the nation in which it takes place, Ubisoft's upcoming feudal Japan set Assassin's Creed Shadows will instead center its narrative on a foreign-born black protagonist, which we now know has officially been confirmed from the trailer. The deep, the, and he starts out as a villain too, which is kind of weird. And then of course the girl does it, but she's the actually the, the girl's actually already the assassin. And so she's gonna have to train him. So there's gonna be a lot of whammon power nonsense going on in there as well. At least that's kind of what I got a feel from the trailer. I mean, yeah, given we've seen female assassins in the past, but that wasn't something they really introduced until what brotherhood after before that had always been pretty much men exclusively. I mean, you'd have friends and allies and stuff like that that were female that would help you out with things, but never like a full blown assassin, at least unless maybe it's been a while since I played the games and I need to go back and play them and, and I've forgotten something, but correct. 
correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. It has been a long time since I played those original games. So the details regarding the next entry in the long-running action series were first divulged to the public courtesy and now default deleted due to copyright strike from Ubisoft, video uploaded by noted Assassin's Creed leaker and video game YouTuber Jonathan. Therein, according to a recap, said the video provided by Loman with the help of machine translation uh, on Reddit, said Jonathan revealed the identities of the Shadow's two leads as the male samurai Yasuka and the female ninja Naoi. Based on the historical figure of the same name, Yasuka's story will reportedly see him go from being one of the only remaining survivor of a slave ship following a pirate raid to eventually being taught the ways of a samurai while serving under warlord Oda Nobunaga. Meanwhile, Noe is described as a fledgling operative in the Shinobi, the local and period name for the assassins, who was brought into their ranks after her family was killed by a group known as the Order, the local period name for the enemy the, for the enemy Templars. Okay. In addition to Yusoka, now his identities, Jonathan also alleged the game would unsurprisingly, uh, given that being developed by Ubisoft, feature an abundance of DLC, included a $40 season pass, two expansion packs for $25 each, and various microtransaction currency packs ranging in price from $5 to $50. Now, this is probably the honestly the worst part about it, strictly from a gaming perspective, not necessarily a historical perspective, but you're going to go out there and they're going to ask you to pay $70 or $80 for this game. And then they're going to include a $40 season pass on top of this and two expansion packs for $25 each plus a bunch of microtransactions. This is stuff is the kind of death rattle of a gaming industry that simply is desperate for money because they know the quality games, the, the quality of the games that they are putting out there are just not up to snuff to be actually make good blockbusters. This is sad. This is pathetic. And if anything else, this should be the biggest offense that people are getting upset by with Ubisoft out there. But of course, there's the historical problems as well. And also on record time, just after his hours videos was taken down, Ubisoft's Jonathan Scoops regarding Yusuko Noah was confirmed by Leak of the Shadows main key art. Now, obviously, we haven't got the confirmed about the DLC or the packages, but considering Ubisoft's track record, we all kind of know this is exactly, this would not surprise any of us in any way, shape, or form. Just the amount of money. I mean, literally, they're asking for like literally an extra couple of hundred dollars in order to complete the game and get absolutely everything. That is insane when they're already going to charge you $70 to $80 for this game to begin with. That is nuts. So let's just talk about more of the key art. Like I said, all of this stuff has been confirmed. Like I said, the trailer has dropped. All of this has been confirmed as well. So notably, as readers familiar with this character may already be aware of, despite being directly inspired by the historical Yasuku, his shadow's interpretation deviates in two very significant ways from his real-world counterpart. First, Yasuku did not make landfall in Japan as a result of a raid on a slave ship. In fact, there exists no historical record that he was ever a victim of the African slave trade. Oh, but we've got to have our diversity. We've got to have our victim ideology, don't we? Rather, he was brought there by a Jesuit missionary known by Alessandro Vellango, whose service had found himself under had found, who he had found himself under prior to his ship in the East Asian nation. So literally, it was a Jesuit missionary. Who brought him there? But of course, no, 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 no. Can't have that because that would put a positive light on Christians. And no, 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 no. Second, and despite pop culture's obsession with pushing the idea, there exists no concrete evidence that Yusuka was ever considered an actual samurai, nor that he was chosen to serve under Nabago during his supposed, due to his supposed skills. In reality, what is known is that Yusuka caught the attention of Nabago thanks to his skin color, which the Japanese warlord found mesmerizing due to his having never seen anyone so dark in his entire life. Finding himself amused with both the discrepancy in their skin tones and the men's overall character, Nabang Noga eventually requested that Balgano allow Yusuku to come under his service, to which the missionary obliged. Given his Japanese name of Yusuku by his new master, the African man was then put under Nabugo's employer as a retainer, a noble and respected position with many privileges similar to a samurai, but far, far different in actual regard and duty. Imagine the difference between a doctor of literature and a doctor of medicine, but with more swords. Before later being appointed as one of the warlords, Kosho, essentially the Japanese version of a page boy. So essentially this guy was just a helper. He was an assistant, not an actual samurai of any kind. However, despite the murky nature of his samurai labeling, Yasuku has been confirmed to have fought in service of Nabuga in at least one battle. Following the death of his master during the infamous rebellion by the vassal Akira Mishudu, uh, known as the Honoji Ascendant Incident, Yasuki is reported to have rushed to protect Nabuga's heir, at which time he encountered and proceeded to clash with a group of mission supporters. Eventually bested by his enemies and captured, Yasuku would end up surviving the rebellion thanks to the direct intervention of Masuda himself who then asked what to do with a black man by one of his vassals ordered a black slave is an animal and knows nothing, nor is he Japanese, so do not kill him and place him in the custody of the Cathedral of Padre in India. As for what happened to Yusoko after the battle, while well, that's currently unknown, as outside the known of the fact that he authored at least one letter to a friend, which he gave thanks to God for his survival of the incident. The historical record makes no further mention of the African retainer. 
So following the leak of the game's cover art announced they would be officially unveiling the trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadow on May 15th. So we saw that, right? So literally, they are taking a historical figure and they are completely rewriting his story. He was never, he was never, he never landed there because of an attacked slave ship by pirates. He was brought there by a Jesuit ministry and eventually became essentially an assistant in the court, a high ranking individual inside the court that was probably sought for advice or maybe just the emperor's or maybe this guy's amusement. You know what I mean? And yes, he did fight once. He helped defend, you know, his master's son, his master's child, which completely and totally makes sense if this guy had always treated you well and be loyal, but it shows that he didn't win. He was defeated and he was captured and then kept around because they thought he was amusing and because they didn't think he was worth actually killing. Like that is not historical accuracy to whatsoever. So once again, Assassin's Creed shadows Ubisoft and the mainstream gaming industry out there is once again doing things for diversity's sake, for the diversity's sake. We're going to get wham in power with the guy being trained and probably talked down to by this female, as well as a black protagonist that should have never actually properly existed and was never a samurai in feudal Japan at any point in any way, shape, or form. They are once again destroying, they are once again bastardizing historical, real historical facts for the sake of diversity and inclusion and equity. And that's exactly what all they're going to get at the end of the day. We saw this happen with Cleopatra and now we're seeing it once again. Plus on top of that, all the insane microtransactions, season passes and DLC content, boys and girls, you're going to pay $70 for half a game. Whether or not you care about the historical accuracies or not. At the end of the day, I think the fact that all of that is coming down the pipeline, which I'd imagine is going to be true considering this leaker was right about everything else. It's only a matter of time before we find out, and it's only a matter of time before Ubisoft once again proves how much a disastrous dumpster fire of a company they really are and how they're just full of a bunch of greed and they cannot put out quality games anymore. So they must microtransact all of their customer, all of their loyal customers to death, and it will end up being the death note for their company as well.